Greetings and welcome back to SmartwatchTix.com. We've got a lot of fun things coming, including the new circular ring. It's on day number six of my mandatory two-week wearing period, so it can get statistics and trends. We'll be reviewing this one. And for you Android watch lovers, DT number one has released an Android smartwatch without SIM card. Yes, you can do Bluetooth calling connected to your phone. I know we've wanted that for years with this new upcoming Android 9 watch, but not today. Have you subscribed? I hope so. These will all be right available to you with a little ding of a bell within the next month. What we're looking at today is a thing called a Z83 Max. Now, why? Why? Because it's a it's a fun, traditional smartwatch, and it's incredibly inexpensive. This is coming through Valdis. We've done a lot of Valdis watches here, and it's available off of their Alibaba.com uh, source for under 15 bucks, actually 13 bucks, plus some shipping. Uh, still be under probably 20 bucks for you total. It's a really uh, interesting uh, Android, uh, or not Android, but AMOLED screened smartwatch. Let me tell you the overall specs for it 390 by 390 screen really nice body wait till you see it it's got compass in it uh, chronograph thermometer all these different things are listed in here um, basically that's it five to ten days use IP68 waterproof the Z83 max when we open the box uh, before we open the box I'll show you on the back side of it whole bunch of uh, information on all of these different watches. This uh, Z8X series is out. We'll also be looking at a Z85 later on. This is the 83. Uh, it comes with a little manual we'll look at. Now, what's nice about it is for under 15 bucks, you're getting three different bands, a metal one, now, you can get it in silver or in this black color, and this is a really nice black metal band, quick release. So if you're just shopping for another band for your existing watch, you really can't beat the price to just buy the bands. Here's a leather-ish type, kind of stiff, but seamed, um, again, black for this one. And then this is a nice rubberized band as well. That's the one we'll be using for the review. You also have a completely wireless charging puck in here. You see the concave section. That's what's up. And the watch module itself will just float right on top of that. It's actually magnetic. Not quite strong enough to hold it. If you don't vibrate it, I guess you can. So it'll ho hover right in there and charge it uh, great without any wires to hook up at all. When we take a look at the module, you find that we've got, here's the side, uh, we've got one push button with a rotating knob. You've got a little pill button below it, and then you've got another one over here. So three button watch, and inside the manual, it's a basic Chinese and English manual. English on this side shows you some of the basic hookup for it. It's going to be using an RD Fit app. That's pretty sophisticated. You'll see a lot of data on that one. We'll be showing it to you. Product overview of buttons and touching and how to connect to the watch. Oh boy. And then a lot of text-based stuff. I'm going to let you freeze frame that and read it at your leisure if you'd like to. And another page as well. So, let's put it all together. With three buttons, we're going to press the lower one on the right-hand side for just a moment. And it lights up with an interesting beginning logo and flashes into its watch face. And you've got the little floating island up there, too, now in this one that gives you information. There's no news, apparently, it says. And there we go. Now, before we actually run through it, on the back, I want you to notice this coating that they have on here. You feel it. It almost feels like it's a removable uh, piece of film, but I think that assists in the waterproofing. It does indeed actually have a film on it, and you can kind of see it right here. If I get it in the reflected light, there's the little thing you tab you can pull up to release it. So you want to make sure you remember to get this one off. It's very elusive. I mean, you really can't even tell that it's there, but it is. 
Okay, we have it already running. Let's run through the process. Here's one of the watch faces, a nice one. When you swipe down, you have access to all kinds of good things in here. Shows you your power level, date and time. I've run it for over a day now and it's dropped from 100 to 70%. It's on a fairly quick timeout for us. We've got a, a few different things in here. You've got an a SOS that you can set up uh, so you can make an emergency call if you need to. You've got uh, this one where it's locating the... Uh, there, there we go. Locating the compass and now uh, we have to do this figure eight thing to get the compass to calibrate and there it is and it shows you the different directions just like a regular compass would on this one so we have a compass built into this one and it's accessible right there this is your twist your wrist to light up the screen turn that on and off bluetooth boy really quick turnout um bluetooth activation for pairing this one now you tap that and that should put it in an on mode for your always on display and because it's an AMOLED screen we have it in a digital always on display right now and it'll hang out there for as long as you set in the overall settings double tapping doesn't work moving doesn't work so to activate it you twist your wrist or you tap a button but that's where you can turn this on and off directly which is pretty cool and it's again like I say on a fast uh, turnout this is where you get the QR code to pair this thing uh, with your phone and do not disturb your NFC. Um, uh, if you have any business cards or social media things that you want to exchange and then your overall settings. So we'll drop in here, show you you have your screen off time. That's why it's going out so quickly as low as five and as much as never. Yeah. You can have this literally always on, which we need to do, right? It's just timing out too quickly for us. Okay, come on. I'm going to uh, set it, though, for, say, 30 seconds. That should be plenty. The Smart Island, you saw it floats up at the top, give you information, and it'll be above any of your apps and things. So that's a new feature. I think Apple introduced that one. Uh, but it's now migrated to these watches. I'll keep it off for now so it doesn't clutter up the screen. You have your overall brightness setting, and you can get it plenty bright. You can't even see the center. It's washed out, but if I lower it all the way down, you can see the pattern that's actually in there. We'll run it at maybe a level 2. We don't need very much brightness in here today. Constant on setting. This is that always on. Uh, and again, now you have up to 180 seconds with the always on time before it will go off. So... Of course, this doesn't apply if you have it in the never turn off mode of the standard watch face. But if you have that like we had set for 30 seconds, if we set that for 30, you'll have your regular watch face that then uh, time out to the always on and 30 seconds later time out to black. That's kind of how that works. Then you got key definition for this uh, button over here. Now notice it went off to the always on screen as soon as I turned it away from being straight up. Hmm. Key definition, you can um, choose when you press this button to have any of these things, heart rate, blood pressure, and so forth, uh, breathing, stopwatch, just whatever suits your fancy. I think I've got it set for motion track right now, uh, or that's what the default is. Um, we've got the twist your wrist to see the time gesture and now you have this thing called gesture control when you turn this on this is where you can move your hand to hang up phone calls and stuff and that's another kind of invention that's been migrating over to these watches too you have a uh, vibration uh, controls in this one you have three different levels I don't know if you probably can't hear it but you can feel it Level 1 is pretty soft, um, then level 2 and 3 are pretty much uh, stronger. Your overall do not disturb for all day, or you can have it set for um, time zone, uh, so it will only turn on during the times you set it for at night. So I'll leave it on at this point. You can set up a password for the watch and password control it. Make sure you don't lose track of what your password is. Your different languages are supported. Of course, Chinese and English. 
some European languages, a few more, give you a quick run through. Don't know if you saw your language there or not. I hope so. We have time setting where you can set uh, the date and time directly, and this is where you can also set 12 or 24 hour time. If you undo the synchronized uh, acquisition of time and date from your phone. So if you want to go to 24 hour, you turn that off, then you change that, then you turn that back on again. That's how that works. NFC, we talked about this is where you can pair it with the watch and get the NFC information written into the watch that you'll be able to transfer NFC to someone else. You can't do payments or anything like that with the NFC. This is mostly for um, business cards and social media and things, maybe unlocking locks. Uh, here's where you connect to the phone, the SOS. This is where uh, you put your emergency contact. And then Bluetooth phone, because, of course, this is a Bluetooth calling uh, smartwatch. Um, this is where you connect uh, when you have that all set up in your phone for Bluetooth calling. Factory restore, reboot, and power off are all in here as overall parts of settings. And then about. And about tells us that we're on the Z83 Max smartwatch. That was all here. We haven't even gotten into the rest of these pages, right? That all comes from sliding down and... Here is where you can add more items if you'd like. If you want to power the watch off down uh, from here, you can add that. Weather, information, Facebook, temperature, all these different things can be added directly. And all of them, if you want to take them all, it'll just make it much more uh, busy, if you will, when you slide down. But they'll just stream all the way up on that panel, which is really nice to see that level of creativity that, uh, and control that you'll have with this watch. Slide to the right. Now you get into these little um, tabs, I guess. You have uh, your overall power level. doesn't touch to do anything. This is messaging, uh, text messages. Here's uh, kind of your calendar, your step count, last night's sleep time. And then you can see your heart rate and your blood pressure and your blood oxygen readings. Temperature. You can add an alarm clock and so forth. There's your music player and commonly used or most recently used apps are in here. So you can really just navigate your whole watch by just sliding over and going up and down. However, if you want to go through them all individually, you can press here to get there as well. This way we can go into your running, walking, uh, different workouts that you might want to do. It's set up for that right when you slide this way. And I think that's what's set up now, too, on this button. So you might want to assign that button something different, or you might want to change this around. Come one more, and now we're into uh, blood pressure. I'm not wearing it so the diodes aren't making contact. If I do something like that, even just on my fingertip, it'll start measuring it. I come once more, and now I'm into blood pressure come here and I'm into blood oxygen. Again, the data on all of those is questionable. You need to verify if it's accurate for your own body and against your own calibrated instruments. Here's last night's sleep time, deep and light. More information on the app than what you see here, but at least you get that. Nice that it shows you, in a sense, the edge-to-edge uh, -edge capability of the screen. Look at that. It really goes, literally wraps around underneath the bezel on this one. Very, very nice. Now we're back to the watch face. You can change these simply by turning the wheel. There's another full screen, colorful one. Analog and digital all in one with weather and information up at the top. Here's a nice white one. Another one with moving gears and such. Uh, weather report there. Not touchable on this particular one. Oh, but that was. I touched on the heart rate and was able to go into that. So you just keep checking. Sometimes you'll have buttons on here that you can work with. Another very nice colorful one. You can see the high resolution screen capability on this one. And it's AMOLED. And it's under $15. This is uh, one I downloaded from the Play Store or their, uh, their uh, dial store just to show you some of the quality of the, of the dials that they've got. We'll look at some of the other ones in a little bit. And here's some more intricate uh, gears and things moving in this one with the 
analog clock way up at the top. Yeah. There's another digital display. This is the logo one that they open up with. And I think this is the stock one when you first boot it up that you get into. This has the compass in it. You see that? Now I'm sitting in the north. So right down here, well, it shows south. But if I turn this around so that north is right there, then it's pointing that direction. But you have a compass wheel directly in the uh, watch face, which is nice. Here's another really interesting face. That one has some animation to it. And just a couple more. And we're back to where we started from. Now as for buttons, I press once here. I get into all of my apps, double tap, and I can show you a different way that they're displayed. And double tap again. We come around like this. We can have a circle or a matrix like this. Of course, you need to memorize all of those icons, right? So we're going to leave it in the text mode. Makes it easier for you to see. Dial pad gets you basically into making phone calls. Again, it's paired to your phone to do that. Messages, contacts, call logs, that's all related to calling. Exercise is what we've got on the different buttons over here. You've seen that. Your activity now is your uh, step count activity. And it's basically just showing that in here. Sleep, we already saw. There's an integrated music player with this one. And this is where we can kind of test out the speaker, play a little sample of music for you. Here we go. Got it all queued up. We can play it. Now, you have actual control over volume here. So I'm going to increase it full volume and let you listen to it. There's the speaker. We can mute it like this. So it's nice, good volume. And if you need to listen to it um, up close, you can put this right up next to your ear so the speaker's in a good location as well. And that's the music player. Then after music, we've got your basic heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen. We saw all of those. Facebook, this is uh, still branded as Twitter, not X. WhatsApp, those three social medias are contained in here. Style is where we can change the style this way, if you'd like to, as opposed to double tapping uh, the button so you can actually see them directly. You also, and I think you can program that button if you wanted to just be uh, changing style. Um, beyond that, we've got uh, Siri, they call it, or it's Google, whichever uh, phone you're connected to. Digital assistant correspondence, and it'll speak, of course, out of the watch to you. Weather, come in here, shows you your basic information with forecast and a breathing exercise, inhale, exhale. You can change the amount of time you want, one minute, five minute, ten minute. This is a real long one, so if you're deep into doing uh, meditation and relaxation, this is good. You can also do it slow, soothing, faster, um, whatever works for you, and you just tap it. gives you the countdown. We like to test this to see if it has vibration or not in it. There's the inhale and the exhale, and there's no vibration. So that means you need to keep your eyes open and watching, at least peeking, to see if you're still in sync. Uh, it's nice when it has the vibration in the watch, too, because then you could do it with your eyes closed. But this one doesn't, although it has a lot of different control on it. you got a little calculator in here. Um cameras for using this as a remote camera with your phone. There's no actual camera on the watch itself. The QR code for um, setting this thing up. You have countdown timers in this one. You have a stopwatch when we start that up. Let it run. Leave the app. We're going to check to see if it's still running in the background or not. And it is. So this one is really nice. has the ability to keep a stopwatch running while you're doing other things. Find your phone. We'll just ring your phone, of course. Motion track. Now, there is no track listed here. And this is, if you tie it in with the GPS in your phone, you should be able to get a track on your watch. Setting up alarm clocks. Now, altitude and pressure is going to show you your barometric pressure and your altitude. And it also shows you your exact GPS coordinates directly on the watch. So if you know how to read uh, GPS, you can 
nail it down to about three significant digits. Female ladies, this will tell you where you are in your cycle information once you've set that up on the phone first uh, and paired it and synced it with the app. And then your overall settings, which we already looked at by swiping down from before. We miss anything? Let's see a long press on this button. We'll let you slide to power it off or restore to factory, not reboot. So be real careful. You don't slide the wrong thing and wipe out your watch and have to start it all over again. Um, but that's on that one. This one, when you long press gets you into the key definition for this key over here. And of course, this key then is getting you into um, basically our running, walking type of a menu at, at, at what it's set for right now. Now let's cover the app for this one. RD Fit's an interesting app. This is what the icon looks like when you look for it in the Google Play Store. Download it, install it, set up your watch, pair it. Come over here to open and you'll be in this very first home page section. And it's just filled with data. Look at all of this stuff. We're connected and it should be updating. Um, maybe it already has. Here we go. We can hit that button. It'll synchronize again, bring in anything new. We have uh, step count information here first. You've got your calendar. There's your actual steps by hour. And it's broken down here in these individual segments as well. This will let you see uh, weekly, monthly, six months, and one year totals. Uh, so nice ways of giving you all of your data. Come over here to sports, and depending on which sport you do, walking, running, cycling, and so forth, the data will actually appear in this section. When you go into heart rate now, there's your continuous heart rate from midnight to current time uh, over a 24-hour period, and then it'll reset and do it again. And there again, you can pick any day from the calendar. And here are the uh, different uh, actual readings by the minute. Look at that. Uh, 9, 57, 59, 57, 56, and so forth, and uh, what zone you're in with respect to all of that. So it gives you all of your uh, actual readings, easy to navigate. It doesn't go anywhere with them, but you can actually read them right here on the screen. Then, beyond heart rate, you've got blood pressure. These are individual readings, and when you take a reading, it'll show you your systolic and diastolic. I've done one on each of these just to show you. Then also uh, blood oxygen. Uh, same thing. We're getting individual readings, not a continuous chart. I think in the settings, it lets you set that up, but it doesn't seem to be doing that uh, for us here. You've got also uh, listed temperature, and in the specs, it talked about temperature. But when we looked at the watch, there wasn't any thermometer or temperature icon that we could activate, and I'm not getting any temperature data from it. So that may be an issue um, that's not actually supported by the watch. Women's Health, this is where you have your calendar for your uh, period tracking information. You can see all of the details here and so forth. And we saw already when you tap it on the watch, it'll show you where you are for the specific day. Also missing is blood glucose. Well, we are getting measurements. That's interesting. Uh, but there's no blood glucose measurement button on the watch that we could activate. Uh, so not quite sure what to tell you on this one. There's a calibration where if you know your fasting uh, blood glucose levels, you can put them in there. Should make it a little bit more accurate. But it's showing uh, times that it has done these particular readings. When I checked it earlier, there wasn't anything in there. So it seems to have activated the blood glucose tracking process. Um, but again, it's in the background because you can't take an individual reading apparently directly from here. It's just not listed anywhere in the apps. Let's just double check it again. We have heart rate, blood pressure, and blood oxygen. Whoops, but nothing uh, style and Siri and weather and breathing. It's very sensitive. Camera and so forth. Nothing for blood glucose is in here at all, though. So, yeah, not sure what to tell you, but maybe you're getting it once you set it all up and go in here and try to synchronize it. Met now. This is that index that uh, you get where it's giving you a reading of your overall health and fitness, I believe. 
you can read up on what MET is. I don't use it specifically, but um, you have low, medium, and high strength, and I'm at a 0.8, so pretty down here in the low area. But that'll give you uh, data points to work with as well. And those are all the pieces that are here in the home page. You go to device, shows you that we're connected here. You can unbind it. This is where you would scan a QR code to uh, hook up a different watch. This is our watch face market, and it's got quite a few different styles of watches, both analog and digital. And you can see all these in here. Yeah, they've done some really sophisticated watch design. And again, the fact that this is an AMOLED screen on this watch means the colors will be rich. The blacks will be a nice deep black. So your faces should look just really, really great. As an example, we had that on the one face that was the tiger, I believe. Yeah, right there. That's a downloaded face. I can take this one. It's really fast, so I'll just show you. Um, immediately starts doing the transfer over there. It doesn't have to, like, download it from the server and then from the server to the watch. They're just coming straight through, so it saves some extra time on getting it downloaded. It's under a minute, and then you can check the watch face. It only lets you put in one uh, of the custom faces, uh, and you can switch them out pretty easily. But there you go. That's what that particular digital or analog face looks like on the watch. Again, with the body of it and with those deep blacks, it's really, really nice. Many, many more. You have categories of digital or customized where you can make your own face. Yeah, really nice uh, collection of faces in here. Customized, this is where you put your picture in, move around uh, where you want pointer, digital, and how you want it arranged. So a lot of flexibility to create your own favorite face if you'd like to. Okay, and that's all of these. You set up your notifications, taking a photo, finding the device, all of those stuffs are standard. Uh, your sedentary reminder and drinking water, alarm clocks and motions. Here's where your screen illumination can be changed either on the watch or here in the app. This is the heart rate monitoring again that you can set it up from midnight to midnight continuously every 10 minutes. That's what I did for a uh, heart rate. Here's the blood glucose monitoring, same kind of thing. I've got it for every half hour and saved it. Um, now it looks like it's kicking in. It wasn't uh, throughout last night, so it maybe just needed to sync that information to the, uh, to the app or to the phone uh, from the watch or vice versa. You can update the firmware if there is any, uh, set up the weather uh, information, and of course your contacts uh, that you want to transfer to your watch for frequently called people. You can pull those out of your contacts from the phone and transfer them over there. <laughs> the NFC card bag, this is where you throw in all the cards that you want to transfer to people, uh, your social media accounts and stuff. And then finally, the My, where you have your personal information. I usually register as a female so that I'll get access to the cycle tracking information to show you. Uh, QR code management, your overall settings for permissions, measurements, standard stuff. There's a video tutorial in this one where you can go in, access as a server, and you can read about all of these different things that uh, the app, supports that maybe the watch doesn't like chat gpt and local music there's no extra memory in this one for storing songs but you do have the streaming capability but anyway here's some tutorials you can look through as well and of course about the particular app itself check for a new version and whatnot and uh that's the app so my overall opinion of this one, for under $15, AMOLED screen, always on display, decent battery life, three buttons on it, uh, streaming music, Bluetooth calling. It's a real, uh, if you like the design, I'd say it's worth going for. It's a very well-built watch. Uh, looks like it's solid waterproof. I wouldn't really dunk it underwater without testing it, but it's got a high um, IP rating. Uh, a lot of configuration control capability on this one. And, of course, many, many different faces, including built-in compass. Yeah, yeah. It's worth adding to your collection if you like the design. Check it out. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. This is where you can get this one.
And if I get any other buying sources for you, I'll list them here. Right now, I don't see it uh, through the AliExpress um, setup, but I'll try to have that link for you if we do. It'll be a little more higher price through AliExpress because that's a retail outlet. And Alibaba, as you know, is kind of a wholesale outlet, but you can buy as few as one of these from Valdis. So for $13.29 plus shipping, you could have this thing shipped out to you in either black or silver with different band combinations. And of course, it comes with three bands in the box. Wow. See you again soon. Thanks for watching.